in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might be believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and, he, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and, the, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time, only uh, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he that hath declared him. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and, de and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then, art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou the prophet? And he answered, no. And later Jesus did say he was Elias, that he was Elijah, Elias in the Greek, and uh, that he came to make way the straight of the Lord, the, the way straight of the Lord. He came to baptize in the name of the Father. He came to baptize and preach about the coming one who is, was before John, because he was before the foundation of the world, because he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world, because in uh, men is the light of truth, but the world or me of men perceived it not. They cannot perceive the light in the darkness. But those who can, those who do, those who do, are born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. These are born a new and different and not the same as the world that cannot perceive the light in the darkness because the darkness comprehendeth it not. So here in the opener of John we have the whole problem and solution laid out and the entire reason why the world cannot see the truth and cannot receive the grace. Though Jesus is filled with grace and truth and makes manifest the truth of the Father. For he is in the bosom of the Father. No man has seen God at any time, save for the Son of Man, who is in the bosom of the Father. And the world rejects him, as his own reject him, and he becomes the stumbling block of the world, the stumbling block of all of humanity. In fact, the impediment towards Satan achieving total success, which would be the death of every last human being, uh, and those who serve him get to live a little longer, a little more luxurious, but they will die nonetheless, having betrayed all their fellow humans. And this Jesus prevents, just as God prevents the open slaughter of nine-tenths of the population. Nine-tenths of the population they've had on the docket to slay for many years hasn't happened because God won't let it. Hybrids are not walking around among us because God won't let it. An abomination of the, uh, uh, of the situation won't happen. Uh, a perversion of the world because God won't let it. Indeed, if it gets close, war will break out and uh, those laboratories will be destroyed. He will see to it that his creation is sustained. He will see to it that his people 
are sustained. He will see to it that people in general who believe in him are treated as sons and daughters of the Most High God. And these in Christ have seen the Father through Christ in the Spirit, but others have not. So you see, it's hard for them to really behave. If people knew that everything they do in secret will be blasted from the rooftops, shown on huge video screens in a big stadium, where everyone will boo them for being so evil, they wouldn't do those things. But the Father, they can't uh, acknowledge that, that uh, even on death, they do not acknowledge there's a trouble. I have um, tried with my last breath pretty much for you know, years on end to save a certain person who in the end said, that's all BS. I don't believe it. Don't worry about my soul. It's fine. Thank you very much. And this person is an out and out Satanist, a witch, a liar, and a murderer. And all those things. And I was there to hear a confession, to hear repentance, and to help deliver this soul. And this soul, in the end, rejected, believing that they can continue on in death and they'll be just fine. They don't believe it because the Father has blinded this person so they cannot receive the truth. He has, as I said, cut off the way from this person, cut off any avenue of healing because of the wicked deeds that have done, been done against children and therefore the way is blocked. Now, further to the revelation, this widens and applies to all the Satanists. You have been cut off. The Lord has blinded you now. There will be no more souls uh, in general. I mean, not, I'm not talking about children's souls and, you know, deathbed confessions and things like that. But I am saying that in general, the gospel due to corruption will not be preached throughout the world but corruption will be preached instead. That baptisms will be false. Proclamations and testimonies given on stages will be false. True repentance and born again, uh, those born again will be limited for the way has been blocked off for all humanity because we're going into the sort of a final count of a certain thing before a certain thing happens. Thus, the goats and the sheep have been divided. Those who are made sons and daughters of the Most High God are so vastly different than the rest of the world population as to be named a different species and considered utterly mentally sick and in need of therapy and incarceration. However, they who say this are completely backwards, 100% false. 100% deluded, 100% mentally ill. They can cope only in a group, only in the hive, only with approval. They cannot stand alone and say, this is absolute, this is real, this is my God, this is the truth, this is the way, and there is no other. And they won't because they don't want to be politically incorrect. God has said to these, then I will not be politically correct. I will cut you off, blind you now, so that you will never accept Jesus Christ. Not because I, I am filled with hatred, but because I love my beloved children too much to let you trounce them or corrupt my church or come into where people are serious to only spew your hatred, to try to turn people from the gospel to your sick way of Satan who is only there to kill you, making you a total, utter, complete, 100% fool. You may be rich, you may be famous, but you're a fool nonetheless, because that fame, that fortune, will last but a short flicker of an instant. You will meet your maker, and you will not like it. You will say, but I was told we just go into the ethereal realm and be, you know, kind of keep progressing toward the light. That's what I was told. 
this whole judgment thing, this was so backwards and, you know, Old Testament stuff and it's based in mythology and it's, it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's not really real. God is a God of love and we keep progressing toward the light. I'm sorry even if I did some bad things here and there, but basically I'm a pretty good guy. I don't deserve this sort of punishment. Pretty good guy, huh? Let's put the video screen on, please. Does a pretty good guy do this? Yeah, but I had to do that in order to, you know, be able to, uh, you know, succeed in society. And then they made me. It's not my fault. Does, uh, well, it looks like you're the head of it. You're the, you're the head honcho there, are you not? Aren't you leading the uh, ritual? Uh, isn't there a, a death going on? Are these abominations and perversions? Is, have Has anyone prosecuted you and uh, thrown you in jail? Have you had to pay the price as others have? No. You were protected? Well, why is that? Oh, I'm sorry. You were promoted. Yeah, but I had to do those things or I wouldn't have been promoted. And you can imagine, folks, what a day with it. Well, don't worry. You folks, you, brethren, will be there when this sorry soul attempts to um, advocate his way into, uh, into grace and truth at that point. But he won't know the truth because he'll say he's a pretty good guy. And yet the videotape says completely otherwise. Because you see, here's the thing. Everything that is spoken in secret is blasted from the rooftops. All that is hidden in lies is shown in the light of truth. Every deed we do is measured and accounted for, and we will give an account for it. Uh, if you like to use Eastern religions, karma is real. The, 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 the karmic debt of the kinds of things that people on the satanic way do uh, would be to, to return to earth as some sort of earthworm to be dug up and used as bait to be thrown to fish. I mean, if you want to take a ridiculous example like that, you wouldn't even come back as a human. You'd come back as a worm. Oh, that heater was kind of loud. Uh, that's the sound of a heater in my office here. Um, in my room, in my cave, uh, where I'm able to uh, speak intimately with you. I preached loudly over it. Um, the way of repentance has been cut off. The way of repentance, and, I'm, and I mainly mean in the western region of the United States where I live. Uh, I'm, I don't know that I'm speaking for the whole world, probably not, but for, as far as this nation is concerned, the way of repentance has been cut off. It will not occur to them to repent. They, uh, if you if you want to have some scriptural proof, I do believe that the Lord has given me a scripture. It's well, it's the one you already know at Revelation nine. Uh, let's go ahead and look at that because I think you have to understand what's happening here. It's the same thing that happened to the Jews in Israel regarding Jesus. Um, I thought it was here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm on chapter eight. Sorry, my eyes are not just as good as they used to be. Hopefully they will be again one day. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hand. This is after plagues now. They did not repent of the work of their hands and they should not worship devils the, or idols of gold and silver and brass, or if you like, money, commerce, etc., which can neither see, see nor hear nor walk. Neither did they repent of their murders, their sorceries, nor their fornication, nor their thefts. I always point to that. That's what I just went through in, uh, in trying to deal with some people. They did not repent of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor their fornication, nor their deaths, thefts. And um, lying... Sorcery, murder, fornication, and theft. And I might say using people as batteries. 
I'm very aware now that uh, many of you have been used as batteries, okay? And it's, it's a fundamental thing they know how to do. And it's unfair because you are not aware of it. You just feel tired and drained. But it's not that you're tired and drained. It's that they are ab able to use you and to drain you and to do harm to you. Usually it has to do with, uh, yes, a soul like this needs deliverance if you can spot what it is, but deliverance is Christ. These doors must be shut. These soul ties must be cut. You know, um, demons cast out, the yeah, unclean spirits cast out. But all these provide like a, like you might say, a, a plug-in on your, say like you have a plug-in on your body. So a witch, someone that knows how to travel in the spirit, usually witches travel and come to your bed, come to where you're trying to rest, and they plug in and they power up off you, leaving you out of it, drained, leaving them all like shining and, and energized and, and powerful. They do this to a number of people. Also, the satanic rituals and circles are, are meant to do this very thing where, where somebody gets the benefit of everyone sacrificing their blood, their semen, their you know sexual energy, murderous energy, whatever it is they do. You know, It doesn't matter. It's being harvested by and given to certain people, taken from others. And you can understand that. That makes perfect sense. They become addicted to it and live like that, looking for lambs to plug into who are unsuspecting, that they will be then drained of energy. Now, I have, you know, I've been through this the last six, eight months, you know, heavily. And, you know, had to shut some doors uh, that I didn't, I thought were benign, but, but were not, you know, they were cancerous. And I can just say that... Um, those of you who are sacrificing for other people, for the benefit of other people, or trying to make other people happy, but they're never happy with you, and so forth and so on, um, know that they're manipulating you to have you around so they can plug in and drain you. They have no regard for you whatsoever. I don't care whether they're a family member, uh, mother, father, f daughter, son, cousin, aunt, or, you know, it doesn't matter. The significant others who are on that way will use the intact ones to boost themselves. That's the only way they can live. And then they'll become honchos over over the, the wasted, over the drained. And this is a sad story of humanity, but they know how to do it. It's one thing that they get taught when they move through to the other side. This is one of the things they do. Their success is based on the trauma of others. Now, the best way to actually get a pop for these witches, because you have to be a witch to actually manipulate that energy. So the best way to, to, to actually get a pop is to somehow traumatize the person, you know, in some way, hurt them in, a, in some way, and then suck it up, uh, the trauma, and that becomes pure light, pure energy, and a sheen develops over the person immediately. Um, you know, a lot of times when there's abuse in families, you know, childhood abuse traumatizes kids and they can, they can suck that in, you know, the other way is, um, visiting, you know, they'll visit you. They'll try to sexually molest you, um, in the spirit at night, uh, th at the workplace, they, they, you know, you may suddenly feel completely drained, like unable to go on with work. And you don't know why this heavy tiredness has come over you and you could sleep for 12 hours. And you don't understand it. Somebody's tapping you. You know, someone is, I don't know who. Someone at work has got something. Maybe they have some object that you left at your desk, something, a pen even, something you used, and they'll use that to try to gain access. You give access through, uh, also through sin patterns, like, you know, um, for example, if you have a Ouija board or if you go get drunk or, you, you know, all the time or your, your, your thoughts are, you know, um, on the carnal rather than the spiritual. I don't know. You know, there are various ways of opening doors that they can also access that way. Um, but the getting drunk, you know, when I say getting drunk, I'm saying a few, you know, a few beers and couple of joints and I don't know, you know, you're sitting there with uh, people at a bar and 
watching sports and talking about chicks. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, it could be benign like that where it doesn't seem so. Uh, no, I know. I, 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 I don't advocate sex or drugs and rock and roll. Not necessarily. <laughs> I don't advocate um, sex because there are too many of these women that are that are uh, you know for the men are are leeches. And they're just having sex with you in order to get, you know, something out of you. And it's not, you know, it's it's not your, um, it, believe me, it's not your your uh, a sexual fluid, if you will, to be, I guess, crass. Sorry, but it's more than that. You know what I mean? They want that opening. Go something like this. Okay, let's. Uh, some of you are having this. Okay, let's let's deal with it. Uh, you fall in love. She makes you fall in love could be a he for you women. You know, you know, you're devastatingly worried that they won't call it, you know, you're all a, a bother now. You think they'll like me? You think that, why didn't they call me? What's wrong? Is something wrong? Should I call them? And meanwhile, they're all cool and you're not, and they're feeding, you're feeding them. You are, you are, these people are generally witches and you're feeding them. And they know what they're doing. And they, they leave a pile of dead bodies in their wake. She'll be the answer to your dream. She'll be the girl of your dreams. But it's, it's in your mind. They manipulate your mind so you think that's what you're getting. But when you really look at her, in the end when it's over and you have no emotion toward her whatsoever and that door is shut, you really look at her you go, how could I have fallen for that? It, it's not what was in your mind. It's not what was being fed. Okay, this is a very dangerous thing. Some fathers should teach their sons about to watch out for this. Mothers should teach their daughters to watch out for this. And, uh, you know, the, 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 like the Madonna song, the handsome stranger, because a lot of times there's, there's predatory vampires out there just looking to hook up that way because they need to feed and they cannot even exist because they're cut off from God. The only actual food you see the, the light that, of men that comes in in John 1, you know, the thing that animates us is the thing they spend in the satanic way. So they need to refill up on it. Something God has given them, but then when they're cut off from God, they have to get it through other people who are still hooked up. And how they get to be leaders when they have no right whatsoever to lead anything. How they get to be president of the United States, I don't know. It's amazing. We've had several that are in that category, who are you know, male vampires, you know, who, are, who have been able to boost themselves to president on the trauma of others. And, you know, it's watching it is, is horrifying. And then, of course, when things don't go well, well, there's usually a sacrifice going on, you know, some awful killing or something that, you know, they have some hand in. And um, it's terrible. It's disgusting, and they're going to burn. That's all I can tell you. They're going to burn. Oh, man, they're going to burn. And they think they're going to go on. They're New Age prophets, the prophets of Baal. That's the only prophets they listen to, the prophets of Baal, have ensured them that they're going off. Uh, they're going to be uh, going through an apotheosis. Like George Washington. They will be deified. <laughs> They will be made into gods for their service. Their service, including being rewarded for learning how the game is played and learning to feed off others to boost themselves above and then win. And they will re be rewarded for winning with godlike status. And they, I kid you not, that's what they believe. The more trauma and trouble and destruction they cause, the more they feel they will be more powerful gods even than that because it's everything is the opposite of the way it should be. They do not repent of their sorceries and all those things because those are the things they consider precious. Those are the things that make them successful. Those are the things that boost them above all humanity. Those are the things that vet them in their system as being above others and totally successful. Those are the things the murders, sorceries, lies, and thefts that make them respected and powerful. Therefore, those are the things that are worshipped in a man. 
to the extent that he can deceive the world and yet be conducting those kinds of acts, benefiting from that, getting more power and political power from that, and winning the game in the end. So when they die, they believe that the moment of death, they will go through an apotheosis where they will be pretty much enshrined and even worshipped by those left behind to go on a grand adventure where they will actually influence things on earth from another dimension or whatever. Uh, yeah. So when a minister of Jesus comes around, hey, God, yeah, it's all fake BS. It's not the way it is. They absolutely do not believe. Don't worry about my soul. My soul's just fine, thank you. You know, worry about yourself. You're the loser. You're the one who never figured it out. <laughs> oh, but we did figure it out. We figured out that it meant the destruction of a soul. We figured out that, that you would not be on death in possession of your soul. If you're not in possession of your soul, you're cut off. You've already gone through the second death. You're just a corpse that's still breathing waiting to be buried. You go into shame and disrepute throughout all the universe forever and ever and to the outer darkness where no one pays any attention to you because what's really going on is life. The light that you seek, the light that you seek to suck out of other people, that light goes on, capital L. And the people, the children of that light, the children of Jesus, the Lamb, are elsewhere that you can't get to because in the dimension that is coming, and in the New Jerusalem, and the way things are, this ultra-dimensional shift that occurs, there is no Satan. That's what it means by locked in the bottomless pit. It means a dimensional shift, where there is no Satan. That's the, the translation of that. So, it's a world where Satan doesn't exist, therefore, you don't exist. Not only are, not, are you not going through an apotheosis, you know, the apotheosis that occurs when, when, when God makes you a son or daughter of himself, you don't listen to men a a anymore. You only listen to him because he is the only source of information that you need. And, you know, you have been, in a sense, made into God's little g. You've gone through an apotheosis in that God has done with you and you still live on the earth. They think they're going to get an apotheosis, mean to be become I mean to become a god, big G probably. But you see, your position in Christ is a divine situation. They are still in the profane and darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend the light. Therefore they do not apologize for their sorceries, their witchcraft their thefts, their lies, their fornication. And when, when, when it says fornication, you can imagine included is all the perversion, including and especially their, their, their big feat. This is their big achievement. Global pedophilia networks that nobody busts, that are theirs, uh, the slave trade, the child slave trade, ch child trafficking, weapons trafficking, and drug trafficking they've been doing for centuries, and, and they get to have their hands in that pie. Apotheosis? No. Death and destruction? Yes. And I guarantee you, not only will they burn, and whatever, use that as a metaphor if you like, whatever that means, they will be conscious that they could have chosen other and they did not. There is perfect consciousness after death and perfect memory. There is nothing hidden. You can't just tear it up here on earth and expect that you're going to die and slip away. That does not happen. Or become everything is everything. You know, good people and bad people played their parts and all are part of the one. It's all love, baby. It's all going to be okay. Wrong. That is incorrect because God is a God of perfect justice. If you want to take it in the natural, equilibrium is a law of physics Nature, science, and everyone would agree that equilibrium, the law of equilibrium is, uh, pervades all universes, all times, all space, etc. The law of equilibrium states that 
Anything that gets out of balance, one way or the other, will be put back into balance or a state of equilibrium. Force will go to bring it back into a balance or state of equilibrium. So anyone that acts in a certain manner using theft, sorcery, you know, feeding off other people's trauma, you know, even light vampirism like that, all of that will find in a person justice would be equilibrium, meaning they will be held accountable for those things that, 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 you know, there will be a force to push back to equilibrium, which is perfect grace, truth, and justice. And all justice will be meted out perfectly um, and will be judged uh, upon death. Those in Christ have been forgiven for all of whatever. The, they're not judged in, in, in the end. They are, um, their works may be judged as, you know, as Jesus says a couple of times, but, you know, in general, they are set free, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, their sins forgiven because they're smart enough to figure out to be sorry for those things they've done, to be sorry when they sin, to let the Holy Spirit convict them of sin, and to repent before the Holy God and enter into the relationship with them, making them sons and daughters of the Most High God means relationship. When Jesus said in Matthew 27, 21, and 22 and 23, when he said, depart from me, I never knew you, you who work iniquity, I never knew you means I never had a relationship. You never became sons and daughters or, or in brethren with me because you did not have a relationship with the Almighty Yahweh and you could have, but you did not. You did not. You refused. You did works. You saw that you could use my name and it got you know, miracles done, but you could prophesy pretty accurately. You could do things that would make other humans think you're of God, but you do not fool me. I expect a relationship it would be better that you did none of those works and had a relationship with me like a thief on the cross than did all these great works but had no relationship with me. Because you go to the same place, the sorcery, the murderer, the sorcery guy, the, the, the liar and the fornicators, you go to that same place. You who are so expert in the church system. You who just believe there's just no way you couldn't be saved. You who also engage in the satanic rites behind the scenes because you don't think God is watching, which, you know, most churches engage in. So why would you be exempt from that? Anyone who does not would be scorned and looked upon as evil and uh, kicked out or framed or, you know, you know like, like with me, they threatened to get me because I was prophesying to people they wanted to get me some restraining order. And I said, no, that's OK. I'll leave. I'm, I'm a gentleman. Now, I can see that uh, you do not want the word of God. You do not want truth. You have your appointed prophets that will come up and be like the psychic phone network with people that pay good tithes. They get to be first in line. But people like me, you don't want to hear the truth. You don't want to repent. You don't want to reform. You're going to burn. But you, you say, no, you don't care. And I'm gone. One might wonder why it is you go through all the trouble, but I'll let God sort that out. I, I don't know. You know, I keep thinking maybe there's some hope, but the Lord shows me there's more hope for the heathen. You know, those people out there that have no religious background, no training, no nothing. They're just, they're just bouncing around trying to make a living, trying to make ends meet, trying to have a friend, trying to just get through this hard thing. And uh, he says there's more chance with them than there is with you of the church thing. And uh, because that door has been shut. And that's the prophecy. The door has been shut. You know, and it has to be because some event is about to happen, doesn't it? Some Something, some kind of shift, some kind of a deal, some kind of global catastrophe, some kind of a global crisis. But something is happening with God that he's doing with the earth that means you know that like you know the gates are shutting the event is about to occur you know the main event is about to occur and i hope it does i hope this is the main event of the book of revelation you know the uh the the the, the coming of the new dimension the coming of the new jerusalem the the ending of this world system the establishment of god's rule on earth through uh his word and through the light that that is uh, now going to be uh 
uh, pervasive that uh, God will light the way. Um, there's no more need of lamps and lamp oil and things like that or light bulbs. This is clearly fourth and fifth, sixth density kinds of dimensions that uh, Satan does not exist on those. He does not exist on those. Um, called, when you say the second heaven, third heaven, look at that as the second dimension, third dimension, second heavenly dimension, third heaven, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth, etc., above 3D, which is the earth in this realm. And, um, you know, Satan has access to the second, which would be the fourth dimension, which would be the dimension of the astral plane and disincarnate spirits and occultism and spiritualism and all that. The next one, the third heaven, is uh, he does not exist. He can petition God. Yeah, and the throne is supposedly the third heaven. I think the throne's at the seventh heaven, but, you know, um, the throne kind of comes and goes. I mean, the throne appeared in Ezekiel as a UFO, you know, it was, but, it, but it was creatures and all these different things were part of the actual flying object. That's why I believe New Jerusalem is like another, you know, object so that we may have even been talking about the New Jerusalem in Ezekiel in a way, you know, um, or an aspect of it. But that Satan does have access to God. So that would mean, I guess, he could be the, the third, you know, but God has access to all the dimensions, so he could be talked to in any dimension. So he, Satan's not barred, even if he was just only in the third dimension here. He would not be barred, but he apparently can get to the second heaven. But no further. Paul says he saw the third heaven, but could not describe it. That'd be like fifth dimensional reality. Well, that's the reality that's coming to the earth. And it, 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 like I said, I've been taken there and looked at it. It's, it's, it's a big adjustment, folks. I mean, you really, you're really going to have to adjust, you know, because if you looked at it now, your mind could not possibly comprehend everything. You know, it would just, things would be fuzzy and out of focus and you wouldn't really be seen clearly. It would be, take being there for a while to acclimate. And souls that are satanic can't actually burn up before getting there. They can't actually get there. They can't actually exist. Those souls, you know, soulless ones, the vampire, they cannot exist there. That'd be like for a vampire living on Bermuda and there's no sunset, you know, in the, in the you know, living in, in Palm Springs in the sun, getting out for a suntan. You'll never see a vampire able to do that because it's a realm of light. There's no, there is no darkness. There's, these guys have to have darkness or they cannot exist. You know, so they can't make it there. So there is no Satan. There are no Satanists there. There is no Satan there. Where they are, we don't know, but we're not concerned with them because our consciousness changes from past, present, and future to now, now, now. There is no history of them ever having existed. Hence, we wouldn't ever even think of them at all. There would be no thought of, there would be no, there is no them and there is no history and there is no future. It is marvelous. It is wonderful. It is awesome. It's what everybody takes drugs for, to get into that zone. To take the pressure off. To take the weight off. And you and I are really there now, but we're not completely... It's coming into our consciousness. As this world's about to implode we will become more and more conscious of that realm rather than this one. And once you start living in like fifth dimensional consciousness, things get a lot easier, man. I mean, you know, you get out there and gang stalking evaporates and all this other stuff that you've been through. I mean, some of us have been gang stalked since we're like, well, me, it was ever since I said no to Satan, you know, in a, in a, um, ever since I said, go F yourself to people that were trying to initiate me into it uh, as an older teen. And I, and I, you know, after that, um, the gang, it never stopped. It'd been like an onslaught since then. But now it's kind of fading, you know, they're fading out. They're there. Oh yeah, they're there. Oh no, don't, don't give me, they're there, but they're fading. You know how a photograph fades in time and the images just fade away? Or you don't know, have, you ever watched a time travel movie where the, you know, where there's there's an anomaly, and then the photograph starts. The the guy next standing next to you, and the photograph starts fading out. You know, but in a movie, 
that's kind of how I look at it. That's what's happening. They're actually fading out like they, they, like they don't exist. And in this new dimension that's coming into this one, they actually don't exist and never have existed. There'll be no memory of them existing because they never actually have existed because they're not real. Uh, nothing that is of this time, space, past, present, future paradigm is actually real. It's just a a momentary uh, prop at best and fades away, but there is no memory of it because there is no memory. And that day is, uh, the day of entering into that thing is marvelous indeed. I don't know anybody that wouldn't just, it's like, like I said, what they go for with drugs, a certain kind of nirvana, like in the first five minutes of drugs, and they keep chasing that, trying to get back to that first five minutes, the first time they ever took, you know, meth or heroin or whatever, some heavy duty narcotic, you know, that really made them feel out of this world. The, the, the addict can never get back to that. Okay. So they keep shooting and shooting and shooting, you know, more and more heroin, let's say, to get back to that initial rush. But it never does. It's, and it's like, I think some people call it chasing the dragon, right? They never quite get it again. Well, imagine having a euphoria a thousand times more insane than, you know, more intense, to use, to, to, to not butcher the language completely, uh, than heroin, you know, in its, in its initial rush phase where, you know, you're, or, or, or meth or whatever, you know, where you have the feeling of being like a god, you know, in that first five minutes you've, you've ever done it, the first initial and you, all of a sudden you're like on top of the world, you know, and then, and then it's downhill from there. These are the, these two drugs will kill you faster than anything. The worst two drugs, those are Satan's pharmacia, purely designed to destroy humanity. There is no other purpose. They lure you in by making you feel real good. And then they take you down a road to hell. All right. But that initial thing that people were trying to escape to, that impetus, that motivation to get out of this and into something good, to feel good. Come on, you've got to give it up. It's, it's a normal response. Well, I never took drug. I never desired to take drug. I, well, then there's something wrong with you. So you never desired to escape your reality. How can you be fit for the kingdom of God if you don't desire to escape this? If you're fine and adjusted here and all normal here, you got a problem, man. you got a real problem because, you know, without... The need to escape this without hatred of this world, you will never make it with Jesus. So you high and mighty Christians that think because you never took drugs, you're above everybody else, you got another thing coming because you are just too fat and proud and stupid to figure out that you need to hate this world. And you need to want something better. You need to desire to be, you know, in love and in euphoria and in, you know, to know there's something better available, but to accept this and say, I didn't do drugs and I'm doing this and I'm doing that and be all happy with yourself here. Horrible. You're a failure. Who are you? You're not going to tell me what to do from the pulpit if that's your attitude. No, Jesus came for sinners, you know, a lot of the sin that we've done here is, is, is trying to escape, trying to feel good, trying to be okay, trying to fix what's damaged. You don't have that? You're just perfectly adjusted? Well, there's something wrong with you. Now, you've got a problem, a real problem. I'm always searching for that feeling of euphoria, for that feeling of release, for that feeling of where all is right with all the universes, where everything is, just comes down to a single point of, of, of bliss. I'm always wanting that. That, that, that frees that moment. And I know that what I'm talking about will be the fulfillment of that. And no drug will be able to produce it. All drugs can do is give you a glimpse of something that might be, but if you try to do it your way with drugs, you won't make it. At the same time, the impetus to do the drug is, is good. I've said something controversial. The desire to do drugs is good. 
because it means you're disgusted with this world, you're disgusted with yourself, and you'll do anything you have to do to feel all right, to just be okay, and further than okay, to be in euphoria, to be in love, like it was when you, with your first love, to be in love, to be to be high, to be, you know, I know what you want, I know what you want, and God will give you that. And he's the only source there is for that. But the person that doesn't have those desires, I... I'm telling I worry about them. You know what I mean? I mean, there is something seriously wrong with them. Yeah, I used to look at them in high school and think, wow. And what they were harboring, what, what their satisfaction was all about was uh, that they'd been initiated into the satanic and uh, that's how they got satisfied. Satanism could never satisfy me. It would never be enough. Satanism is just like a drug. You know, it's just like meth. It's like heroin. It's like, uh, you know, Oxycontin, you know, whatever, what, you know, whatever. It's, 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 you know, instant euphoria, you know, but they have to keep stoking up the ritual in order to keep it going. And eventually that means vampirism. They have to learn how to feed on uh, innocent people, traumatize them, suck up it and then glow like a light bulb. And this is going on everywhere. I see it going on everywhere. Every time when you someone's traumatized and it's sucked up, that's a called a satanic ritual or rite. It's actually a rite. It's actually performed in a circle. You don't need the Hollywood definition of the robes and the hoods and the official pentagram and circle and candles. You don't need all that. It can all be done very subtly so that the whole world becomes a circle, you know. Uh, the people of the circle, you people are going to burn. People of the obelisk, and the, which is up in the circle, you're going to burn. Because you became satisfied with this world, and you became proud of your sorceries, your murders, your thefts, your fornications, and all the things that go with it of your perversions, if you will, since fornication is kind of an open word, um, you know, broad term, let's just say perversions. You became proud of those. You went to that side because you wanted to fix what was wrong because you didn't feel like you belonged. And then you got much more than what you bargained for. You got high. You got all the stuff you look for drugs for. You got in that. You became very satisfied and very successful in this world. I don't think there's anything God hates more because you see that realm preys on his innocent children and he is like a, he goes insane with wrath and vengeance to avenge all of that. And that's what the wrath of the book of Revelation is all about. It's vengeance. It's not like I've, People rebel and then he gets mad. No, it's vengeance for the entire thing since Genesis. It's vengeance for all that has gone on, for all that innocent blood that cries up from the ground. It's vengeance for all those things that have happened, including abortions, which is just another satanic rite. War is another satanic rite. All done in the circle because the world has been made into a circle. And I can tell you this. Even in the book of Revelation, his vengeance is merciful. It's actually a little lighter than what it should be. Lighter because he is love. He uses just the right amount of vengeance, which, which still shows him as merciful and all truth and all knowing and all, all life and the creator and all those things, which shows him as perfect. His justice is perfect because it is compassionate. His justice is perfect because it does avenge, but it does not go into any excess or even, or under. It's it's just exactly right. I mean, uh, with me, do I need to see more vengeance than what I see in the book of Revelation? Than the great and terrible day of the Lord, which goes on for more than a day? Do I need to see anything more than that? No, I'm satisfied when he moves. I am satisfied completely 100%. You know, it's not my vengeance. I mean, I have been taught to let it go. That, you know, that, that look, if you have a, a scorpion 
it's going to sting people. If you have a Satanist like the scorpion, it's there to traumatize other people, to prey upon other people. It's a vampire. You know, that's basically what it is. It's not human, you know, and, and yeah, they, they, you can slaughter them all day long. It doesn't matter. You're not killing any human anymore. You just, you know, it's like protoplasm. It doesn't matter. You know, what's hard is that they, they behave like they try to pull on your heartstrings. They try to make you care about them. And they, they try to tell you that you're like them and they're like you. And they can't wait to go to heaven too. And blah, 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 blah. Can't wait to go to heaven. Like heaven, no. Can't wait to, for have, for actually the, it's not you going to heaven. It's the kingdom coming into you is really technically, um, scientifically, if you like, it's more like it comes into you. You don't go into it. I'm feeling a lot better today because I, you know, I, I think things have become very clear for me as to, um, in my own life, you know, the things that I've, the horrors that I've seen, I, I, I just couldn't get my mind around it. I mean, I really couldn't. I couldn't believe evil was just like that. Like people are proud of their sorceries and their, you know, I mean, I see it in the Bible. I see it in life, you know, I, I still have trouble accepting, you know, like an abuse victim that keeps trying to say, oh, it's not really like that. That's not really happening. That didn't really happen, you know. I've been like that my whole life, I, you know, just, you know, and then that's unstable, you know, in denial, you know, just that I, you know, they say, well, don't you get it by now? Don't you see? You know, so you better join our side unless you want to be the next cannon fodder. You know, so that's what they've been telling me all along. But then I look at them, I go, you're so evil. Look what you do to people. You're the ones doing it. And they say, don't you get the message? I'm, like, uh, I'm sorry, are you sending me a message? It's like the big Lebowski in the sheriff's office in Malibu. He goes, uh, you know, he goes, you stay out of my community, you know, gold bricker. You stay out of here, Lebowski. You hear me? And he goes, um, did you hear what I said? He said, he goes, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. And he throws a coffee cup at him and hits him in the head. Um, you know, it's like, they say, did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? And it's like, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. That's not the right response. That's a fool's response. No, it's not. What you have to offer won't do it for me. The satisfaction that you sense, seem to feel is um, a satisfaction I don't want. I, I, I'm greedy. I want more satisfaction than that. I won't be satisfied furthermore until you pay for what you've done. That's the wrong answer, dude. That is the wrong answer. Yeah, I'll have great satisfaction at the Lord's vengeance. Because I'll be the kid that he's avenging along with you. I'm convinced that we're here. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't choose to come here. You know, of all the different places you could go, this, you know, Earth, this particular thing. Um, you know, th there's got to be a reason. And I think one of the reasons we're here, and, you know, you're going to suffer too. If you're intact and you feel guilt and you feel ashamed and you feel like lost and traumatized and all that, you know, um, and they're preying on you, you know, and it's like, why would I come to a place where I'd be preyed upon? And the answer is because you're here because God wants you here as a witness to his moving, as a witness to his glory, as a witness to his power, as a witness to his beauty, as a witness to his marvelousness, to a witness to his grace and truth and, and, and honor and perfection and justice, to be a witness to all those things despite everything they're doing to you. It's one big book of Job, you know? Will you give up God if I throw all these rocks at you? Will you give up God if I make your life miserable while we, we sit and dine on caviar, go to Hawaii and do other stuff? You're just a loser on the street corner. Will you, 
Will you, will you still stay true even if it's like that? Yeah, because I've seen your glory, Lord. Because I've seen you, Lord. And they have nothing that compares to you. Nothing that even comes close. And they of the world believe that that position, that crystalline position, is insanity. You must be insane to, to throw away your whole life for this false promise of something better after. Only a fool would do something so silly and stupid. Well, then you haven't seen the Lord like I have. You haven't felt his presence like I did. There's no satisfaction in the world like that. And I've felt that from time to time on earth in real time. I've entered in, he's entered me and made me speak to you. And there are times where it's so amazing that nothing else is even considering a considerable there's nothing to compare to it and I've seen him deal with the wicked and the wicked are all the people that are conformed to this world that's the wicked in the I'm seriously that's the wicked that is the wicked When the Bible says the wicked, that's who they mean. That's, that, that's what the Bible is, is indicating. You mean the normal people of earth? <laughs> yep, that's the wicked in the Bible. See, because their hands are bloody. They're not in Christ. Christ is not in them. I mean, they could play church, but it doesn't matter. They... Um, They play by the rules and they, you know, have their little lives and, and they feel like they're not hurting anyone. And what's the problem? And the problem is, I guess they can't see what they're connected to and what it does to people. What it does to innocent souls. What it does to God's children. You, when you see that kind of pain and trauma and unfairness and destruction... To that in the so-called outside world. You see, the outside world here, like the Soundgarden song, Blow Up the Outside World, um, they mean blow up God's kingdom is what they mean. That's what the, exactly what they mean. And if you remember that song from years, from the grunge days, right? From years and years ago. Um, that's what they mean. I knew that's what they meant by that lyric that day that I heard it. I'd run into people that don't seem to understand. Blow up the outside world it simply means um, blow up anything that is not satanic, is not part of this circle. Well, that means war on the saints, okay? That's what it means. War on God. And they prosecute the war. Thank you very much, Soundgarden. Oh, you're not wicked. <laughs> <laughs> and they prosecute this war vehemently. And I think it was Soundgarden that even had a, a, a horrifically mocking so a song about Jesus called Jesus Christ Pose. And what an a-hole this uh, Chris uh, Cornell is, really, seriously. Absolutely um, a predatory vampire um, criminal. Because his intent and his whole way is to boost himself by persecuting those who mean him no harm whatsoever. Those who are just trying to get through themselves, just trying to get through with God. And he would, I guess, want you dead. 
That's what he said in his music. That's what he said in his lyrics. Make no mistake about it. He is not your friend. He very much is, is your, your vehement, angry, hostile, you know, um, who seeks to eliminate you from existence because he's much more important than you, being that he's of a Seattle grunge rock band, so he's really important. I finally got it on all that, you know? Um, the reason I believe that they had any success at all, they are good musicians, and you know, but there's lots of good musicians, it is because of uh, their spiritual position and ranking. And that's the only reason they um, actually achieved a name for themselves back in those days. I understand they're back together trying to trying to get it on again. That will never happen. You guys are done. Thank God. Punched. The, your ticket is punched. Just go on, you know, until you burn. Or, you know, hopefully you'll repent. Hopefully God will make a way for you to repent since I mentioned you here today. I don't want to see you. Even after everything you've intended toward us, I don't want to see you suffer. I don't want to see you burn. I don't want to see that fate bestowed upon you. At the same time, I'm not, I'm cut off from, I'm not to pray for you. I'm not to, you know, you must be pretty bad, pretty bad asses. Yeah. Because the uh, Lord doesn't want prayer for you. So I guess you crossed a line. Big one. And that's not so of all of all rock groups. I mean, I, I guess they're, you know, particularly, um, you, you know, there's a, they've, they've waged a war. It's, it's, I think what it means, they're involved in waging a war against God and his people. And they try to veil it in cryptic lyrics that they don't think, you know, any of you idiots would understand. And uh, so, which is, of course... You know, and at the same time, they want you to understand that they they got a hostile motive against you. So if they see you on the street, they can be sure to really throw those sorceries and vibes and gang stalking at you. Wow. So I guess all that glitters is not gold. Everyone who has long hair and beards is not cool. <laughs> they might as well have their heads shaved and wear military outfits and carry around Uzis or uh, MP5s or uh, you know uh, M16s or something like that. I mean, they ought to be just full out military garb, just going up and down the street shooting people. I guess the disguise of fuzzy, you know, long hair and beards and, you know, flannel shirts and, and grungy holes in the jeans and tennis shoes, that's just all some sort of deceptive costume. Because what's really going on with their music is a war against God, intentionally. And a hostility toward anyone that isn't like them, i.e. hence the outside world, which they want to, quote, blow up. So they're in there with the three-piece suits and the corporations and the military uh, uh, industrial complex And they think they're not. Because all that stuff is also in the inside world. Inside the world, get it? Inside the world. They believe in salvation through man. You know? I give you everything I have. You give me everything you have. And together we are on the seesaw riding together as one and everything will be okay under the witch queen of heaven. Lovely. And then, of course, die on cue. Dumbass. Oh, no, I thought we were going to go on forever. <laughs> oh, you think you're righteous. Let's show, roll the tape, please. Here you go. Uh, is this what a, you know, that, I mean, if you, 
if you don't want to see that videotape, you had better repent. You just use, instead of arguing with B, you ought to just use this podcast to get on your face right now. Otherwise, that tape's going to roll and everyone's going to see it. That videotape is going to roll. And everything done in secret, like Ezekiel looking through the wall in the chapter uh, 8 of Ezekiel, it's going to be out there for all to see. And no, no one even needs to judge you. You'll judge yourselves in, in finally breaking that seared conscience, finally awakening that conscience into guilt and shame, uh, so much so that even Harry Carey wouldn't be good enough for you. Now that's, you know, so when I say I can't really look at how evil evil is because I just couldn't, I was in denial most of my life just thinking it couldn't, you know, that didn't happen to me. I didn't just get abused. Those things didn't, you know what I mean? I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I just couldn't accept that it was like it was. And, and, you know, they thought that was cute, you know. They're in, you know, but don't worry, their day is coming. He will just cut them down, and I mean mercy, without mercy in that day. And it can run on for a long time, as the song says, but good God Almighty's going to cut them down. And already is. There's whole batches of old people going into hell, being dumped into dumpsters and being you know, sent to the garbage dumps as we speak. They think their their little box in the ground is any different than the landfill. <laughs> it is a landfill. I had a hard time understanding really how evil evil was, and a hard time when it would be done to me that I couldn't get my mind around it. And uh, so I lived in a traumatized way most of my life. You know, most of my life has been traumatized and upset and hurting and, you know, a lot of depression, a lot of, of being real recluse and unable to deal with the outside world at all. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, outside world meaning outside the some sort of shelter, you know, and and. And uh, I've been trying to heal desperately for all of my life, trying to get on top of this thing. Seeing mothers, fathers, you know, siblings, friends, high school mates turning into vampires and monsters before my eyes, capable of murder and lies and sorceries and all that, you know, at, at, at young ages and being completely materialistic and, you know, can't be too thin or too rich or have too many diamonds and, you know, just acting like, you know, just, just, you know, other people are trash if they're not on this ladder, if they're not at my staff, the rest of them just kick them down. This arrogance, this satanic arrogance, this, this pride and arrogance beyond belief. I've seen them develop into those kind of monsters where they make everything everyone else's fault. They do overt good deeds to people so they can then you know, behind the scenes, traumatize them and give them mixed signals. Like, you know, they do stuff for them and then behind the scenes trash their reputation and work on, on, on pushing them over the cliff to suicide while they're giving them, you know, money and trinkets and things and jobs and arranged lives and spouses and, 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 and door number three and everything else. And I just could not accept it, folks. I... I just couldn't accept that kind of evil. I just couldn't imagine it. It was so anathema and foreign to my consciousness that it's only now, the last month or so, that I've been able to actually, even the last couple of weeks, that I've been able to actually go, okay, okay, all right. It really is like that. Oh, man. So that's why they look at you when you object and they think you're crazy or there's something wrong with you because you object to the sorceries, the pedophilia, the murders, the, the, the child trafficking, the, the war, you know, whatever it is, you know, in the world that they laud. 
because you object to those things. There's something wrong with you because you're objecting because you could fit in with everybody if you could just accept those things. Take your place in that game and then kind of work your way up by getting good at that. And then, you know, basking in nirvana while everybody else suffers at your hand. Whew. Oh, I just, I just couldn't. And you get millions of people playing that game. It's just, oh my God, it's disgusting. It's horrible. It's, 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 you know, it makes even Rosemary's Baby look like a comedy. Because the hive is way more developed than that. You know, way more sophisticated than that. And it makes, you know, you feel isolated, like it alone, like you, there's nowhere you can go, there's nothing you can do, there's, you know, it's just all pain and torture and horror everywhere you look and there's no relief anywhere and then you, 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 you turn to God, you turn to the great Father Almighty. Please, Lord, oh, please come quickly, Jesus, help us. Yes, see, there's the right response. There's the, that's the response the Father's looking for in you, right there. Come to me to be rescued. Come. I'll rescue you. I won't turn you away. Anybody, everybody, come and I'll rescue you. You know, I painted a picture so terrible today that I think that even the most hardened Satanist will, uh, at least if they heard of, They'll either, well, maybe they'll throw, they wouldn't listen, but, you know, some people are going to feel guilty from this and recognize it's not me, it's me via the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit that's making you feel guilty, not me. It's the Holy Spirit that's in you, you know, that the, the, makes your heart beat. You know, the life, the life is the Spirit. And then there's the Holy Spirit, which, of, of course, is a comforter, but it also goes throughout the world to convict people of sin, to get them to repent. And you can repent right now. Just simply turn to Jesus Christ and ask him to save you and, and, and ask him to reveal to you who he is and you'll see that he's the son of God. He is God. Thus, he is God in the flesh. And the world doesn't comprehend him and he is the stumbling stone and he is the cornerstone and he is the capstone and he is the all in all. But he and only he can save you. You need to be washed by the blood of Jesus Christ and set free of this game, this horror. And have your, your mind, you know, restored and your consciousness restored. You know, that, that your consciousness becomes Christ. And in so doing, the whole thing lifts. And you can then walk through this world, despite what it is, and do the good works of, of the Lord, despite the onslaught against you, against him, against what they call the, quote, outside world. So unfortunate, because... They're really the outside world, so they're talking about blowing themselves up. Because you see, the inside world the only inside there is is with eternity, is with life, is with heart is with mind is in love unconditional agape love is in creator of the universe when you're with him you're actually inside the creator of all things so what they call the inside satan or the satanic circle is really the outside but they have it backwards and they bask in how smart they are to have figured that out when actually they're quite deceived. But no doubt about it, if you're, you know, with the kind of that mentality, you will, you know, have, well, you'll be taken care of, but, you know, you'll be filled with demons. In other words, they'll regiment you. They'll, they'll make you go left and right and straight and, you know, and you'll think you're on your own, but eventually you'll come to realize that your life is really not your own, that you're part of something larger, and you're connected to all these people that you may not respect anymore, and you're wondering how to get out of it, and I just told you how to get out of it. But your inside is not the inside of what's happening. What's happening isn't Satan. 
You know, God controls Satan. You simply failed the test. You're dining on dog shit and you think it's caviar, you know, and it's the other way around. I mean, I, I say I could say dog poop, but dog shit has much more of a biting kind of, you know, no pun intended, but much more of a, you know, potent uh, sound. You know what song I'm doing like a, a, a cover remix type of thing on? Is I did one on Cruel Summer. I, I don't know what it is with these covers, but I, I mean, sometimes I do them. Uh, I'm doing uh, uh, Run Through the Jungle, Creedence Clearwater. Not, circa 1968, nine, I don't know, way back there. Yeah, there's something kind of, you know, I understand what they mean by it, and I, I don't mean the same thing by it, so I'll probably change the lyrics <laughs> to suit myself. But no, nah, there was something haunting about it. And I don't know that much about, uh, you know, John Fogarty, the the leader and the, the the really great singer he was. I mean, just a tremendous vocalist. And I uh, don't know anything about him or anything about what happened to him, or if he's still alive. I don't know. I have no idea. But uh, I got, because my daughter liked it, you know, and, and uh it's amazing she liked a song from then, but yeah, she's got that on her iPod. You know, and uh, she has the same love of music as, as I do. Well, she's you know, like an artist, but anyway, we've had a month together of just a, a, an amazing time. Not only a great reunion, but we're good friends, you know, and there's there's been that you know, that, that sort of, that thing missing in me and the thing missing in her, we're able to fulfill that in a month's time. And, you know, I look forward to, to, to more time in Europe and stuff. But uh, basically, yeah, Europe's still a long way, you know. She's got to fly uh, when she returns. She, she's going to have to fly to, uh, you know, to Rome and then up to uh, Florence, meaning she's going to have to fly from here probably to, you know, L.A., and then get a nonstop to Flo to Rome, which takes a long time. I mean, that's like 11 hours or some some such, you know what I mean? And then get uh, another plane from Rome to Florence, which isn't such a big deal. And, um, you know, she'll be, then she'll be there. But, I mean, it's... Uh, Still a long way, you know. When you get on the plane, you got to have like an iPod type of something to blot everything out. And some people will take a sleeping pill just to be able to to, to catch some Z's because you, just being awake for eleven hours in a seat is is with people crying and screaming and dropping drinks and moving around and that din of the airlines is a shh. You know, I know it's a necessary evil. When I go to Europe, I think the way I'm going to do it is is I'm going to um, travel along. The, you know, I, yeah, I'll go there eventually. But, you know, I'm the... Uh, I have to be ready to go there. I can't go anywhere without the unction of the Lord. Can't go anywhere, can't do anything without His telling me to do it. I'm just here on vacation on Earth. You know, I'm being lent out to Earth to do what I got to do. But I, but my orders come from him, and I really am not here to be on my own. There is nothing here for me on the Earth. Because, because, it, because it's fleeting. Because you build anything you want. It's like it's just going to fall down the next day. There's no point. I'm here to baptize souls in the name of Jesus Christ and get people, like what I said, out of that muck out of that, you know, sound garden technology of, 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 of uh, Europe, where blow up the outside world, that kind of hostile, awful, dumbass, idiotic, I just, I don't even know what. Going to war against God is the stupidest thing anyone could do. But I mean, you know, they do it because they want fame and fortune, be out there and have applause. I understand. But it's a heavy price to pay, eternity burning and just total hell with no chance of ever any emancipation at all and just uh, you know and, and being conscious that you could have you know but you didn't and then having 
And I've talked to these dead souls who have come to me and said, you know, is there any way you could petition the Lord to get us another chance so we would live a righteous life, be able to tell people, you know, not to blow it because of what awaits them on the other side. I've had those souls talk to me. The people don't believe it. They've been brainwashed to think that it's just, you know, I'm okay, you're okay. You know, God loves everyone. Everyone's saved in Jesus. I had one guy send me a YouTube the other day that everyone was saved in Jesus. You know, that good, bad, indifferent, whatever you do or don't do, it doesn't matter. Christ redeemed the whole world. Um, so they take those scriptures very, literally, they forget the scriptures about judgment and about, you know, weighing what you've done and not done, you know, about all those things. They they don't look at those. They just say, Jesus redeemed the whole world. It's done. Everyone's free, whether they know it or not. Um, if they keep on with their evil deeds, that's covered by the blood of Christ. He covered the whole world with it. He wins. Uh, humanity wins. Everyone goes to the same place and we just move on. So don't worry about my soul because I've already been told that I'm I'm cool and I can keep on with my evil deeds because I'm already covered in Christ. And Paul warned, you know, you don't use the blood of Jesus to sin all the more. He said, God forbid, remember? So they, they're they just ignoring, they're just cherry picking a couple of scriptures out of context and trying to let that state that all, all people are saved. And, and it's just not true. And that humanity will evolve through time and other incarnations and different things into this beautiful up. Uh, you know, George Washington type apotheosis where man will achieve divinity and be as gods. And it's just, oh gosh, I, there's nothing I can do about that level of delusion. The Mormons teach that, the Masons teach that, and nothing I can do about that. It's, you know, and the inside, excuse me, Soundgarden, I'm sorry to pick on you guys today, but you know, um, maybe there's a reason. Maybe there's some hope. But here's the thing. Uh, and I'm sure they would not disagree with my interpretation of their music if they're being honest. I, I, mean, I mean, publicly, they mock, oh, he's crazy. No, but I mean, you know, deep down, I think, you know, in a quiet moment, uh, you know, they would agree, just like, you know, it is what it is, you know. They would agree, you know, that, yeah, they were, that's the modality and mentality and the limitation and, and lack and d ignorance and delusion and um, bondage they were in at that time. I forgot to mention pride. Mean pride, that is. But even they would have to admit ultimately, and all souls have to admit that I'm right ultimately on this on this issue. They would all have to ultimately admit I'm right. And they could just say, I'm weak, I didn't want to suffer, so I myself lived in denial, thinking that all my works were good when they were evil. And I'm sorry. Well, don't apologize to me. You know, even, even those of you who really hurt me, that don't need, you know... I mean, you know, wanting my death and all that kind of hurt, you know, that what hurts more is your intention than, you know, if it actually happened. I mean, but what hurts more is that you would, you know, I, I, to someone that meant you no harm, just just stick a knife in them when they when they're not even your enemy. The answer to that, folks, is they want money. So they believe, that, you know, so for money, yeah, they'll do things like that for money. I understand. I don't hold a grudge. I forgive, you know, because I got something so great that I'm looking at right now that I can't hold any grudge against this world or how evil it is, which I had a hard time accepting, even though I've been talking about it for 10 years on the Internet. I have a hard time accepting that it really, really is that bad. And it's worse than anything I portrayed for the last 10 years. It's actually worse than anything I could describe. But people don't believe it because they live in their own compartment where it doesn't look that bad. And they don't see their part in the whole. They don't see how it all connects. But anyway, it's okay. Look, it's all right. It's okay. Most of the world's in mass denial. The world is insane meaning in denial and doing acts that it's unconscious of and justifies without any means of justification 
And that's a very dangerous state of affairs. That means there'll be wars, rumors of wars, and you know, technology used against people and poisonings and all kinds of things are being done to humanity on a massive scale and around the world because Satan's goal is to have the world go up in flames. To bring hell to earth. And though the Lord has shut the door on a lot of the, um, you know, I, I don't know the answer because apparently there are some people that will repent or that the Lord wants that are stuck on that other side and have done extremely evil things. I mean, really over the top stuff that people could probably wouldn't even believe. And they are going to be on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. They're going to be hawks for the Lord. They're going to be very fervent. They're going to be like Paul. Great. Great. But in general, I am to say this, that that way has been, you know, it's almost like, okay, we've all taken our seats and now the curtain's about to rise for the final event. That's how it feels to me. And, and you know, um, that would be very exciting if that's really true. I don't want to get my hopes up too much because, you know, the Lord's always dampening my enthusiasm. You know what I mean? When I start getting enthusiastic, he's always saying, curb that, you know, curb that, drop that, you know, just keep your eyes on me, stay sober, vigilant, and keep your eyes affixed to the horizon. Don't look down, don't look to the left, don't look to the right, and don't get excited, don't get depressed, don't go crazy, you know, just almost like, just go straight forward, there you go, there you go, that's what I want, that's what I want, that's what I want, you know. Put the bridle in, don't cough out the bridle, just take the bridle and let me ride you, okay? And that's what I want. And I'm just like thrilled and saying, yes, okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. I'm so sorry. I just, for being rebellious. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I trust it's going to lead to a great place because he's my creator. He's not going to give uh, a child, you know, a stone if he asks for bread. He just won't. He'll give bread the best bread you've ever had. So I'm going to be patient. And even now I can feel it and see it and sense it and touch it. Even now, even now, I have a sense of uh, euphoria about it. You know, a sense of, oh, yeah. A sense of I can go anywhere and do anything. There's nothing I can't do. You know, there's no place I can't go, provided he sends me there. <laughs> And that's the deal we have right now. God, you know, and probably that's just because I've been traumatized and I'm, I'm, I can't handle being out there on my own. I, I, you know, I, I get, I'm too sensitive. I pick up on everybody's conversations and head trips and everything else before you know it. I'm, I'm a basket case and, and I just don't last very long. I'm really that weak, folks. I'm just that pathetic. <laughs> I am that pathetic. So I have to go with him and then be like completely uh, addicted, you know, you know, he's my crutch in every way and be in him at all times in order to to uh, last. Otherwise, they just tear me up. I mean, they're, they outnumber me a billion to one. They just tear me up. And they try to tear you up when you're in him, but when you're in him, there's some strength that happens and that scares them and they back off. They, well, you know, there's, they, they, well, it goes something like this. Oh, he's crazy. Who knows what he'll do? You know, oh, watch out. Who knows? You know, and it's really what they're afraid of isn't you. They're afraid of what's in you or what they see around you or what they, what's giving you confidence, what's giving you laughter, what's giving you joy. And then they think, oh, no, what? They, they become a f very afraid when you're laughing very afraid when you're joyous, very afraid when you're, when you're, you know, pushing kids on the swing or, you know, you know, celebrating life, you know, running with the dog, uh, <laughs> uh, laughing in the aisle of the store, you know, just stoked to be looking at a poster or a billboard and, you know, digging on people's art and, you know, not, not judging it like, oh, that came from a Satanist or didn't, you know, forgetting them, just going like that. You know, when you leave your dwelling unit, you need to uh, leave that, uh, you know, all the pontification, you know, and all the preaching and all the, the uh, 
uh, and I mean pontification in a good way, you know, pontification kind of talking about God and his power and all that. All the, um, maybe that's the wrong word. All the description of the battle back and forth and this and that to give you the impression that it's billion against one, you know, billion against one. How are you going to, this is, it's all pushing the whole stone up the hill, how hard I can't even get out of there after. No, no, it's the opposite. You lay all this at the door at the cross. You lay this all at the cross, this whole, you know, you've got to forget it and go out there and be like, only got your focus on him and only have your, only remember that if you're not joyous, then, um, you know, they win. When you're laughing, they lose. When you're joyous, they they, they lose. When you're uh, serious and somber, and you know you're at war and embattled and all that, they win. You know the Lord wants you to have such confidence in Him, you just start laughing. Not at them. You know you you don't go out there mono on mono like my guy's better than you. No, you don't do that. that then you lose. No, vengeance is the Lord, not yours. You know, they're they're all busy comparing, you know, apples and oranges and penises and, you know, cars and, you know, haircuts and whatnot. Look, you, you just go out there and you just go joyously knowing your father loves you. He created this whole world for you to play in. You know, and though it may be hard to shake all this and we talk about all this, because a lot of you were traumatized from all this, like me, and hurt and feel sick to your stomachs over it all. Don't know where to go with it because you were made a certain way and you know you don't fit with that. And so therefore you're the enemy. You know, you're evil. You've done nothing wrong to anyone. You've helped a lot of people. You've you've given to a lot of people. You've you've saved people's lives. But that doesn't matter. There is no forgiveness for your crimes. What are they? Your serious crime and what's made you a serious freak is that you couldn't see what's right in your face in this world kingdom of Satan, in this, this thing that's obvious everywhere, that you just didn't get it. That makes you a danger. And that's what you've got to leave at the door when you go out there. You can't go out there with that. You can't go out there thinking what they're thinking about you or whether they are or they're not. A lot of times the shields are up and they don't even see you. And they don't have a thought for them because they have no idea what they're doing. You, you give them too much power. You give them too much, you know, too much insight. And you certainly give them way, way too much intelligence. You're giving them credit for stuff they just don't have. To have figured out that um, uh, they can um, sell their soul and get a, 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 you know some sort of trinket. That's not figuring anything out. That's giving up. That's quitting. I got a peaceful, easy feeling. <laughs> the, the eagles. A peaceful, easy feeling. God, what a horrible little group that was. Using that kind of twangy country stuff, you know, in rock to put forth their satanic messages. I mean, it's a good thing that I'm just... Uh, completely ruined human you know just wrecked just beleaguered and put upon and wrecked you know just completely uh broken you know what i mean just broken with no 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 fight in me to fight them i gotta leave that to the angels and god to do that on my behalf because i'm just broken you know, part of the reason I'm broken is because God couldn't use me unless I was broken. So I guess I got to stay broken. But man, I'm broken. I, I've got no clever thing to say, no witty thing. Can't go on like Bill Maher and start arguing and make my points and make him look like an idiot. I, 
That's not going to happen. I don't have the strength to do that. Besides, I'm not at war with them. They're not my my enemy. No, they may be the enemy of God, but to me, it's just they're just ignorant. I guess. I mean, you know, they're not my enemy. It's it's, you know, but I don't feel like I'm an. I don't feel like some grudge against any one person. You know, I've just had trouble accepting how evil it really is and what it really means and what the whole thing is all about. And I, I'm I'm just saddened and sickened by it. I just can't believe it. it. It's how could it be that bad? I I just don't see it. And then, you know, a lot of these people they're involved in charities and and uh, you know, anti uh child abuse and um, you know, cancer drives and AIDS and you know, trying to work in the politics to get good stuff for their communities and Everyone seems like, well they're, well, they're all the good, I must be crazy. And then I'm willing to, I've been always willing to look at that possibility. I'm nuts, I you know, obviously need help. But that's just it, you know. If I were nuts, I wouldn't feel pain like I do. You know, I could... I love irresponsible, crazy people. You know how they—they're just crazy and unabashed. You know, I—I I envy that. You know, I—I I truly envy that. But no, I explain it in a very sober, common sense way, and you know, no one can say I'm crazy based on, you know, my record. You just—you just can't say it. You know, yes, you know, I—I'm very sensitive. I'm very sad. You know, in a lot of ways. And uh, I get very passionate and excited, you know, and I express a lot of good things through music, but usually it's, you know, perceived as very rebellious and, and uh, you know, almost reactionary. And it's not reactionary. I'm just creative. I just kind of, you know, I just don't share their view that, you know, I don't feel like, um, as Soundgarden stated, blowing up the outside world because I... You know, according to them, I'm in the outside world. <laughs> My daughter, um, I refer to her because we're having, you know, uh, you know, like a month long intensive, you know, and we're both trying to get as much healing out of, uh, you know, healing that separation and, you know, and all that. And, and, and so it's like a healing time. But she said, you know, you like, you went crazy and went all the way to the other side of crazy back to normal. And that's, that's exactly right. I went crazy and then went further than crazy. And then it became normal. And I came into complete clarity. I went through madness to get to actual clarity and out of denial into normalcy. But you know, most psychiatrists just think Jesus Christ is a myth. And also, if he were real, he would be the most sick person to ever visit the earth. You know, I mean, so you just can't win, you know, in, in, a, in any kind of contest. You can't win trying to convince them. You know, their souls are just fine, thank you very much. You're the loser. You're the, you're the problem. And you're there to, you know, to minister to, to baptize them, to to give them, you know, hope and, and they tell you to go kill yourself. <laughs> then they start, you know, citing all the Christian reprobate type people that use Christianity like, you know, the, 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 the Westboro Baptist Church and their God hates fags thing and the whoever, you know, rooting for this death of soldiers and, you know, and other groups and then, you know, the movie Red State and, you know, they just, they just want us all dead, you know. They have actually, you know, call for violence against us is what they're doing at this point. And the thing is, is we, 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 we call for peace for them. We, we call for help that they, could, that, that they could live, that they could be at peace, that they could be, uh, they have the desires of their heart. We don't want to take anything away from them, but, you know, the, it's irrational, their hatred of us. It's irrational. And it's evil because, like I say, they kill people that mean no harm to them. 
They do harm to people that mean no harm to them whatsoever. They only mean to help, and and they and they're polite. They won't, you know, if they rege or you reject me, I, I will go away. I'm not going to stand there and keep on trying to get to convince you of anything. But even that, you know, just me being somewhere on the earth bothers them. You know, they want to come, you know, hunt me down and you know, some far away, far flung island somewhere where there's nobody else there but me, they, they, they know that what well, someone's they're going to fly there, you know, with social workers and psychiatrists and people to try to convince you that this is really great. And all I would say is, no, you're going to die, you idiot. All your sandcastles melt into the sea. Everything you hold dear is falling away. It's transitory. Don't you get it? I stand with a lot, of, you know, I, I, I do believe in detachment. I don't know one Buddhist who is as detached as me. I don't know one. But I'm detached not by my meditative exercise of being detached, which only attaches you all the more. But don't tell the Buddhists that. They're experts. No, I'm detached in almost a cosmological, positional, in spirit, that is, positional way. I have been um, sanctified and separated by Yah, by Yahweh God Creator. And I didn't do it. I don't earn the Buddhic merit. And of course, if you think that way, you couldn't be a Buddhist. So it's, you know, they got themselves totally hypocritical, contradicted every which way. My hypocrisy is covered in Jesus. I, I would otherwise just be a flaming hypocrite. I'm, you know, a hypocrite in the sense that, um, you know, I can preach one thing and do another pretty good, as good as anybody else. And thank God for that, because I'm human. But I'm still covered by the blood of Christ. And, you know, I'm convicted when I do something like that, that it's not right. And then I have to, you know, I, I don't get a pass. But the thing is, is, as far as separation, what the Buddhists want, I've got. But... Once you've got it, don't expect that you're going to be in the state of, you know, uh, <laughs> happiness, laughter. Because real reality and the serious reality of it is how can anyone really be in laughter when you see the evil that is really evil hurting people and you want to help it, but you're told no and, and you're watching people suffer and, you know, you're watching people that don't deserve, you know, they get, they're getting it, you know, what they, and you're seeing, you know, supposed good people do such evil people evil things to to people that mean them no harm and yet the community sees them as good and you just and there's no way to just dance for joy in that kind of situation at the same time we dance for joy because god is amazing god is pure love god took someone like me anyway he separated me you know he detached me you know, more and more throughout time, you know, but he detached me. You know, whether I like it or not, I am detached. When things happen, you know, I scream and yell and complain. So the Buddhist really doesn't want to go there. They want to be like, they're so detached that nothing that happens affects it. But in a way, that's Christ-likeness. What they want is not att attainable through meditation at all in any way, shape, or form, never will be. If you make prayers to uh, Buddha or burn spirit money or, you know, do all these sort of turn your gods into bodhisattvas and do all, you're just going to wind up in a gaggle of confusion. It's just going to be the same old pagan, familial BS that you... I'm thinking of someone in China, you know. You're just going to have the same old familial BS you uh, grew up with. Like I say, the monks, I guess the monks, a lot of the uh, Buddhist monks just think it's a, it's a, it's a, a sexual romper room, you know. They, they're they so detached that, you know, it's, it, anyway, it's... Yeah, the evil is far more evil than I could even imagine. And I could not get my mind around what other people easily in their teens got their mind around and then went with it like, hey, it's gay, you did, yeah, and running down the street. 
destroying everyone they meet or being destroyed themselves, struggling humanity, trying to get through all this. You know, the people that say love the most, hate the most, and everything's backwards as some kind of a cosmic bad joke. And it's hard, you know, but it's easy in one sense. It's not my plan. It's not on my shoulders. It's not for me to fix. It's only for me to do what I've given to do that day. And if everyone did that, this would be a much better place. But right now it is pretty evil and everyone is running after their own way and everyone is selfish after their own stuff and nobody has any common sense and it's just it's it's terrible you know it's terrible and um i think the most heartbreaking thing i saw was when i saw people behaving in that manner in a murderous way and who are in the church of jesus christ and having jesus on the shingle and you know, being pastors and stuff, and then and then feeling justified to bring that crap in there that that's a, that that you know the inside into the church, the in, as opposed to the outside world. You know, bring that inside world into the church. I just can't even imagine. To me, that's that's even worse than what I learned as a teenager. You know, than than uh, you know than than I saw what they did. You know, to people that meant them no harm, and then this is even worse because they take children and you know turn them to satan and then you know and then teach them the bible and they become these sort of double-minded slaves um and and it's horrible it's it's just horrible and they all these pastors believe they're going to go to heaven in fact on top of it i, I just you know there's this sort of evangelical church ethos of people I, you can spot them out there and there is something wrong with them you can't tell them because they they're saved and they're going with jesus and they love the bible and you know everything they're they're they there's no way you can get them on anything it's like they can do everything perfectly and yet you know somehow it's off there's something wrong and at the end of the day, it turns out they're hiding something. But that makes it very, very difficult. Because we are supposed to be here to preach truth at that situation, to set free those captives through the power and blood of Jesus Christ the Lord. And yet, you know, what church leader, what pastor, what what minister, what what youth group leader, what you know, congregation member would even think you're anything but a stark raving mad lunatic that needs to be saved yourself from your own sheer madness. So I rest my case, Your Honor. I have made, I have dug into the nitty gritty dirty things that make people very uncomfortable, that ruin the party every time. So I served you, Lord, but now I ask you to make our people joyous. You know, you want us to left, leave this at the door. When you're done with this podcast, you leave it at the door. Take a deep breath and go out and play badminton. <laughs> <laughs> and withstand it, not turning to drink or drugs. You know, I mean, no, you can drink, I, you know, no drugs. I mean, but. Of course, you can have your drink and all that, but you know, it, 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 when it starts becoming a way of avoidance of all this, uh, not good. You need to, you, you know, let the Holy Ghost fill you. Let the joy of the Lord fill you. Remember, when you're not joyous, you're blowing it with God. You know what I mean? Because if you're not joyous, then they can feed on that. So you've got to be joyous. I know. It's all, if you're if you're unhappy, hunkered down in your home, they can find this in the spirit. They can find you there and feed on that, and then you'll be really tired because they're feeding on you and not able to get up and do anything. Uh, we're going to deal more with the vampires and the whole, you know, the whole thing. I, you know, when you see what I'm looking at, it's even more. Uh, it, it's even worse than I could have described today. 
because it's systemic, you know, it's at the very heart of everything we build, of our civilization. You know, it has ruined our civilization before one brick got built, got stacked on mortar before one brick. It's just the damnedest curse on humanity. It's just, it's just a curse. Horrible curse. We understand, we were taught that it was Adam and Eve and the fall of Adam and Eve that, you know, brought the curse upon us. I think that's a good kind of a metaphorical way to explain that the human was weak in a certain way that God intended, because obviously there's nothing that's happening that he doesn't intend. So God intended Adam and Eve to go the way they went, or he wouldn't have made them that way. He would have made them, um, you know, Satan proof, if you will. And is it a curse when you know in the end that there's a time limit on this whole thing? There's a beginning, middle, and end that God has ordained the end from the beginning. The be He's declared the beginning from the end, the end from the beginning. And therefore, you know, um, there is an outcome that is perfect and beautiful and lovely. We want all souls to partake in that great glory and euphoria that is that, you know, New Jerusalem and the kingdom of heaven, you know, the kingdom of God coming into the earth and, and also called the return of Christ and all. We want people to experience that, but they can't. If there's any bit of your soul with the satanic kingdom, you can't, you literally don't, let me put it this way, just like by laws of physics, you don't exist there now because you'd have to exist there now in order for that. When it comes in, you're just waking up like from a dream. If you don't exist there now, it's because you have this thing in you here that prevents any further, you know, that's it. You can't, you can't be there because there is, like I said, there's no Satan there, no satanic kingdom, no 3D world, no good versus evil, no light versus dark. None of that exists there. And with that, I bid you shalom, shalom. It's Zef Daniel. This is the Zeph Report, brought to you weekly um, online at zephdaniel.com. You can write me at 5 Bisbee Court, that's 5 B I S B W -E Court 109, Box 16, Santa Fe, New Mexico 87508. And you know, if you're fed, let me know, and we'll read some of these letters on the air. Uh, there will be no. Um, tomorrow there will not be a uh, Z and Frankie and Trish. And nor will there be a Z live, either interview or preaching word tomorrow because of uh, some events that are going on. So we will be back the following week. But you will get continuous um, updates and continuous uh, continuous transmissions from the... Uh, you know, from the wilderness, because that's where we're, we're, no, we're not on the inside, and we certainly are not on the outside. We don't have, we're not defined by what they call inside or outside. They do not define us. You know, a rock and roll band does not define who we are. Sorry, it's just absurd. And, you know, that's the kind of thing they like to do. You know, that's their delusion at their pot party, fine. But it doesn't mean that there's any accuracy there. That's just their way of, you know, describing their world. They feel they're insulated, that God will never touch them, that reality will never break in, that they'll never die, whatever it is. But before you go around blowing up the outside world, you better make damn well sure you're living in the real world. Because you're not. And I'll see you next time.